Welcome back to the Ozone Football Podcast. Rob Ogden and Tony Gerdeman here. Week four of college football is in the books. And coming up on today's show, we'll break down the Buckeyes' 76 and nothing win over Florida A&M last Saturday, and then also preview the Big Ten as two-time defending, defending champion Wisconsin rolls into town for a big showdown on Saturday. Um, but first, let's talk about the Buckeyes' thrilling victory <laughs> over the Rattlers on Saturday. Was that was that even worse than we thought it was going to be? It was because to try and imagine that, you would think that you know, it's your imagination couldn't possibly put. Florida A and M as bad as they were, but they were bad in every facet. They were made dumb plays, you know, taking the ball out of the end zone, dumb penalties, I mean, dumb penalties you know, delay of game on the first play from scrimmage. You know, it was it was an embarrassment all around. Yeah, it was thirty four nothing by the end of the first quarter, fifty five nothing by the end of the half, and this was all without Braxton Miller in there. Mm-hmm. Um, he and, misses. Yeah. And you said before the game it would be 35 nothing at the end yeah, of the first yeah. quarter. That was close. They, yeah. they missed Still, wrong. Still wrong. Still <laughs> wrong. Um, anyway, Braxton's out for the third, pretty much the third consecutive game um, after injuring his knee in that win over San Diego State. Personally, I continue to be surprised at how long this recovery has taken him. I mean, I know that those injuries like to linger, but, you know, we were told after the San Diego State game that he mm-hmm. could have come back and played in that game if they right. needed him to, which led us all to believe he'll be fine to play. The next week at Cal, um, Meyer said he was, I think his quote was, he was fairly optimistic he was going <laughs> to play against Cal. He doesn't even dress. Last week he was probable to play against FAMU. Mm-hmm. He doesn't dress again. I mean, so I guess my three questions for you are, does he play this weekend? Does he start? And how much rust does he have to shake off if he does play? You know, we both said the last couple of weeks, based on what Urban Meyer was said, that Braxton Miller would play right. each time out. He said the same thing again this week. He almost, I think... Almost guaranteed that he will play this week. Yeah. But, you know, we've already been wrong taking his word the last few weeks. But, you know, I, he does play. I wouldn't have imagined him starting, but the way Meyer talked yesterday, it sounds like he's going to start. But we've already been misled by what Urban Meyer says on Mondays and Wednesdays. So, yeah. I, yes, he'll play. I'm, I'm starting to think he's going to start. Yeah. You know, where are you? Um, I feel like he's going to start just because of the way everyone's everyone's been talking, and not specifically Meyer, but the players as well. Yeah. I mean, yesterday Corey Lindsley said he looked phenomenal right. on Sunday in practice. Um, so, I mean, that leads you to believe that he's going to start. Meyer said he was at about 90%. Mm-hmm. Um, he said he was hoping he'd be 100% by the weekend or whatever. So, um, yeah, I don't see at this point why he doesn't start unless this injury continues to linger, which I guess I wouldn't be – at this point I wouldn't be that shocked if that's right. the case. So um, we'll see. Um, even if even if Miller does get the start, um, do you see Kenny Guyton playing at all? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think at this point he's going to play every week. You know, it's not a situation where, you know, if they're in a tough spot, you can't bring in your backup because, you know, he's been in plenty of tough spots and he's always produced. I think there's a concern of taking Braxton out of a rhythm. Yeah. You know, and – it's a tough situation because you don't want to break his good rhythm, but if he's playing poorly, you don't want to put Kenny in and then have Braxton start to question himself. Guy threw six touch, a school record six touchdown yeah. passes all in the first half uh, last week. They need to play FAMU more often, you know, to get those <laughs> records up. Anyway, uh, but, I mean, it, d- does Braxton get the hook then if he comes in and plays poorly? Like, two series, you know, he throws two pick six. Do they put Kenny Guy in? Right, of course. I think they do. I mean, that's my, you know, that's what I was wondering you know, that's my thinking of starting why you would start Kenny Guyton so that Braxton Miller doesn't come in and, you know, go 0 for 2 or, you know, you get two short three and outs because then everybody's going to be clamoring for Kenny Guyton and now you have Braxton yeah. Miller questioning himself. That's that's why I thought it was safer to start Guyton, but apparently the coaches aren't concerned. Players don't sound concerned in the least bit. Yeah, You know, they have complete confidence and they're all, you know, to a man excited to get Braxton back out there. As much as you know, all the players and coaches love Kenny Guy, and I don't think mm-hmm. there's any dispute among amongst the team of who the starter is. Right. I mean, Meyer made that clear after the game, and then when you talk to the players, um, they all lo- when you talk to them, they all love Guyton. But I mean, they all seem thrilled to have mm-hmm. Braxton back this yeah. week. So I don't know. I mean, I see what you're saying. I don't know if I'd go that far to say that Braxton gets a quick hook if he has two bad series, though. Well, you said two pick sixes. Two pick sixes. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Um, we'll see. I guarantee it. 
If he throws two pick sixes. You think he's out? Yep. Fortunately, you know, I doubt that actually happens, so, you know, that's why I can guarantee it. Right. Because it's unprovable. I don't know. I mean, it, but it's... To me, the thing is, it's not like this is Braxton's first year as a starter. You know, he's been, this is his third year as a starter. I don't think he would be yanked for good. Right. You know, you'd put him back in in the second quarter or something of that nature, but, you know. I'm going to say the only way Braxton is yanked is if he's showing signs of not being 100% healthy. Right. If that's why yeah. he's not performing. I think if he comes out there and he just has a bad game, I don't see him getting yanked, personally. But, I mean, I see where you're coming from. I wouldn't be, like, totally shocked if it happened. I'd be more shocked by the two pick sixes than yeah. by, than by getting yanked. Yeah, well, we'll see. Um, other big story from the game on Saturday was the return of Carlos Hyde. He doesn't get the start, but he fin- or he gets in uh, third or fourth series, I believe, on yeah. offense. Um, he picks up that first down on that uh, first or fourth and one mm-hmm. there. Finishes with five carries for 41 yards. Um, I know it was family, but he looked pretty good out there. He did. You know, the first couple of carries were, you know, a little shaky, but... Then, you know, his last few, he picked it up, and he looked really hungry. He looked like, you know, what we expected to see with him, yeah. you know, shaking tacklers and dragging people. For and, sure. Yeah, he looked uh, he looked ready to go, and he looked extremely fresh. Yeah, there were a few unlucky family defenders yeah. that got on his way and ended up on the turf. Um, he wasn't listed in the two deep last week. Will he be when that comes out later today? I think so. I think he will. It'll be Jordan Hall and then, you know, Carlos Hyde and... Now it's going to be up to Carlos Hyde to you know take over the team basically take over the running game. Yeah, is this finally the week that Bryante Dunn's name comes off the two deep? He's been, <laughs> he's been on there every week, every week till till yeah, now. Yeah, that's he? true. Yeah, um, it should be. I mean, I think if you want to, Urban Meyer said he wanted to reward Ezekiel Elliott. You know, maybe reward him for you know reward him and put him on a depth chart finally. Yeah, you know, as the fourth or fifth tailback, as opposed to a guy who hasn't played a down all year, and what, and the guy they're planning on redshirting. Planning on redshirting, sure. Um, Jordan Hall, he has a much smaller workload this week. He only gets four carries, goes for twenty two yards though. Somehow finishes with two touchdowns, <laughs> bumps his total up to eight, which is the the most in the country. Um, Part of that probably due to Hyde, also due to the fact that he only played a half, so you know not as not as much opportunity there. Mm-hmm. But I mean, he had 30 carries against Cal. He has only four against uh, Florida and M this past weekend. This week against Wisconsin, does he finish with closer to 30 carries or closer to four carries? Um, well, that would put 17 in the middle of 30 and four. I would think he would be closer to four in that case because I don't know that he'll get more than 17 carries. Yeah, because I think. This is the week that Carlos Hyde starts to become the guy. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. Um, so more hair, more carries for Hall or Hyde this week. Mm, I think they'll be real close. But if it's a if it's a close game, it'll be Hyde who has more carries. I think so too. Dontre Wilson doesn't get a single carry in this game. Um, he does record three receptions for twelve yards. Um, you know what this says to me that. Dontre Wilson is a first teamer. Yeah, you know, he doesn't absolutely. play at all in the second half. He doesn't get a single carry. Yeah, it, um, all, yeah it, it 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 also tells me that the Ohio State coaches, even though they put seventy six points up, it's sportsmanship not to play Dontre Wilson against yeah. Florida A and M because <laughs> true. you know who who wants to watch eighty yard touchdown run after eighty yard touchdown run? <laughs> Definitely not Florida A and M. No. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, on the other hand, he goes for one hundred sixty two yards on fourteen carries. He's the Buckeyes' leading rusher in that game. Also gets those two scores. Um, this is your stat. He was the first Buckeye freshman to rush for 100 yards since Antonio Pittman did it against mm-hmm. Indiana in 2004, I right. believe. Um, 11.6 yards per carry. How much stock are you taking in that performance, even though it came against you know a tired yeah. FAMU defense in the second half? Well, I, we saw what we believe Ezekiel Elliott will eventually be. Right. You know, I think everybody here assumes he's going to be a very good back. Eh, but Florida A&M is just terrible. I mean, he rushed for 162 yards, but would, I would not be surprised not to see him touch the ball this week at all. You know, yeah, or even I, I, play. I would be surprised as well. So, I mean, he, he looked good. He, you know, he was what we expected him to be, but, you know, it, it's Florida A&M. Yeah, in fact, I would, if I had to bet, I would say he doesn't touch the ball this right. week. Yeah, I agree. Um, we mentioned Bryante Dunn. He doesn't get in. It's like we said, he, it's looking like he's going to redshirt. Mm-hmm. Um after the or Mike Mitchell as well, Jalen Marshall, uh, JT Barrett has the opportunity to go in. He doesn't go in mm-hmm. after Card- Cardell Jones cuts his hand and leaves Kenny Guyton comes right. back in. Uh, Corey Smith and Michael Thomas as well. 
Meyer said all those guys are on call but won't be played in mop up time. Mm -hmm. So basically, they're only going to need them if they absolutely, or only right. going to use them if they absolutely need them. Otherwise, they're going to be redshirted. Yeah, it, it would take quite a few injuries probably because you know there, there's a there's quite a bit of depth on offense right now. Um, the linebackers there isn't a lot of depth, but they're still holding guys back. So yeah. I mean, it tells you that you know they don't need to play a lot of linebackers and in this day and age anymore. Right. So, you know, you can afford to sit one just based on the offenses you're playing. Well, that's the interesting thing, too. I mean, they've run so many one-linebacker sets mm -hmm. to this point, so there's definitely been no need for Mike Mitchell. But I don't know, maybe against Wisconsin? I, I mean, there's definitely a bigger chance that they would need him. Yeah. Or, you know, down the road <clears throat> when they're not in the penny. Right. The dime yeah. the whole time. But so. still, I mean, it's it's tough to rely on a... If you don't want to rely on a freshman linebacker you against don't Wisconsin. To, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I, I doubt that happens, but... I'm obviously they're going to be not they're going to be doing more three linebacker sets than they yeah. have the rest of the season. So. I mean, if, if it comes between beating Wisconsin or redshirting somebody, right. you know, they'll play everybody they can. Yeah, um, James Clark as well. He can mm. he'll probably end up redshirting this year yeah. after what he broke his leg or what? What, what did they say officially that was? Uh, I don't know that Ohio State has officially said okay. anything. Yeah, they about said it. it was a lower leg, lower ankle. leg ankle injury. Yeah. So it, and it, I can't watch those types of replays, so okay. I don't know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> It looked uh, fairly serious, though, so, um, and, and we know that he's done for the year, yeah. so we'll see um, if he ends up getting redshirted. Um, Evan Spencer and Jeff Heuerman both get four receptions. They lead the team, actually. Two touchdowns for Spencer, one for Heuerman. Um, Meyer said he wanted to reward those guys for, you know, mm -hmm. they, hadn't, they hadn't seen much action as far as catching the ball, but they, you know, Meyer's is praising them for their blocking ability for the first three games. Kind of just shows off maybe Ohio State's depth. At yeah, the receiver, the receiver definitely, and, and I, it also shows them that they can set out to focus on one skill player and, and reward yeah. him. Yeah, you know, against an opponent like Florida A and M, right? But, yeah, know, at will. Yeah, it, definitely at will. So it's it's nice to be able to pick and choose who you want to get involved. Yeah, we'll see how how much those guys stay involved as yeah. the season goes on. Spencer actually could have had more than he had. I mean, Guyton missed him mm -hmm. one or two times when he was wide open yeah. in the end zone. So he could have finished with even more than he did. Um, we weren't able to see too much of the offense on Saturday, obviously, because I mean, you know, they shut everything down by halftime. Mm -hmm. um, how much do you think we have seen? You know, maybe what percentage of the, of the playbook have we seen to this point, and will we see more against Wisconsin, or how long will it take until yeah. you know they start throwing out everything they got? Uh, as far as percentage, I wouldn't think we've seen you know maybe sixty percent or you know sixty-five, seventy percent. I mean, obviously, yeah. they've had to show some things just to get other defenses to look at it but you know we haven't seen the quarterback counter which was a staple of the offense right. last year we haven't seen the diamond formation which we saw in the off season yeah you know both of those would seem to be you know perfect opportunities to break out this weekend especially yeah, if sure. Braxton is ready to go you know, I mean they blocked it so effectively last year that Kenny Guyton would be fine with it as well yeah you know and the diamond formation would give them an opportunity to get Hyde Hall you know Dontre Wilson back there it's you know I'm, I'm, I want to see that just because of the the different things they can do with it. Sure. How much of that, um, you know, only seeing sixty percent of the offense thus far? How much of that can be attributed to the opponents that we've seen, and how much can that be attributed to Braxton not being in there? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think mostly the opponents, but I definitely think there's some things that they haven't shown just because you know they don't have Braxton. Right. You know, they talk about how they don't really change much. You know, with Braxton or Kenny in there, but sure. then they, you know, also say, "Well, we do change a little." So yeah. clearly, there are a few things we haven't seen because Braxton has been out. Yeah, we should see more this week against Wisconsin, if, if not just because they're going to need to use more, maybe to yeah. be a tougher team. I mean, we haven't seen you know hardly any quarterback runs, called quarterback runs, and which you know Meyer said that was their best play last yeah, year. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. We should see more of that coming up, especially if Braxton gets back in there and is healthy. Yeah, I think they called more quarterback runs with Cardell Jones than they have all season with anybody else. Yeah, Cardell, were you surprised that he didn't throw a pass? Well, you know, they wanted to throw that pass on the fourth down right. that he scrambled. So, right. But, you know, I, I wasn't surprised that there are no passes other than, you know, when they're trying to definitely get to, you know, to the chains. But is that Was that because they weren't trying to run up the score or because they don't really trust Cardell to throw no, the ball? I think it's more about running up the score because yeah. I'm sure they would love to have Cardell throw the ball around but That's true. just to see what he can do. But yeah. it's, what do you learn against a team like Florida A&M? Sure. Uh, Wisconsin's 3-1. They're coming off a 41-10 to win over Purdue. Um, new coach in there, Gary Anderson, a former Urban Meyer assistant at Utah. Mm -hmm. He comes from Utah State. 
And, uh, you know, everyone wondered, you know, how is this going to change what Wisconsin does on offense? And so far it really hasn't. They're still the same smash-mouth football right. team that they have been for the past decade or whatever. Yeah, Luke Fickle talked yesterday. They, they asked him, uh, he was asked, is the Wisconsin offense any different? And he was, like, almost incredulous and, you know, shook his head. And it's like, no, there's no, <laughs> virtually yeah. no difference. Right. You know, they, it is what it is. I mean, it's all the same players from last year minus Monte Ball. Yeah. So. And it's incredible that they can lose Monte Ball, who's the mm-hmm. all-time touchdowns leader in FBS, yeah. and still have the you know one of the best, the yeah. third-ranked rushing attack. I mean, they still football. have three running backs who have all you know rushed for 100 yards in the game. I mean, they're all yep. averaging their third-string running back is averaging 83 yards rushing a game, and he's yeah. a true freshman. Yeah, sophomore Melvin Gordon leads them. Um, him and, and senior James White each rank in the top 10 in rushing yards. Gordon is first in the country with 624 yards. White is 10th. Um, but White is also the nation's career leading rusher, right. with 3,013 yards um, in his four or in his three plus years. So they have two very capable mm-hmm. running backs. So, and uh, Melvin Gordon leads the nation with three yard three rushes of over 60 yards. He's got two rushes of over 70 yards. You know, he he's uh, their jet sweep guy, but he's also been getting the ball more in between the tackles this year. Uh, it's it's a tough tough duo to stop. I don't know that you can stop both of them. Yeah, you might you know. Hope you hope you can stop one, and then maybe try to contain Melvin Gordon on the outside. Yeah, Curtis Grant yesterday was saying, you know, he was talking about, you know, what's different when each when each guy yeah. uh, comes into the game. Do they have to adapt, you know, to to whoever's in the game? And he was just saying, you know, it's just like when Jordan Hall or Carlos Hyde's in the game with the Buckeyes. There's two different running backs. You just got to know who's in there, mm-hmm. um, know how they're going to try to beat you. Um, like I said, Wisconsin ranks third nationally in rushing yards per game. They lead the country in total rushing yards. Um, with almost 1,400. Surprisingly, well, I guess not too surprisingly, but second on that list is Ohio State with uh, 1,244. So Buckeyes got a little bit of running game themselves. Do you think there's yeah. anything to prove for them in this game? You know, maybe we can we can play some math football too. We can run right. down your throat as well. Yeah, I liked when uh, Zach Smith was asked that question yesterday, and he's like, you know, personally, no, there's nothing to prove. But he, then he said, you know, Ed Warner, the offensive line coach. Yeah, he'd tell you. But certainly, yeah, you know, he'd tell you that they definitely have something to prove. Now, Corey Lindsley didn't really. Yeah, he kind of brushed it off mm-hmm. a little bit. But, but you know they want to show who the real power running team is in the Big Ten. They can yeah. tell you, you know, that they won't. But after the game, they'll, if if after the game they rush for two hundred and Wisconsin rushes for, or Ohio State rushes for four hundred and Wisconsin rushes for, you know, one fifty, they'll tell you after the game that they wanted to go out and prove it. Right, and they, I mean, if they do that, they can come out of the game and say, "Hey, Wisconsin, we beat you at your own game." Right, because you know? that's I mean, Ohio State can do that, but that's not necessarily their forte. Mm-hmm. They're not known for that like Wisconsin. Is. So if they come in there and show them up at, at what Wisconsin does best, right. I think. It's a statement. I don't know if it's a statement that anybody cares about making other than yeah. us. But Yeah. Um, <laughs> and like Wisconsin, I mean, their, a few of their biggest plays have been like jet sweeps. So it's not just between the tackles where sure. they're effective. Just like Ohio State, they'll pound and pound and pound, but then there goes Dontre Wilson for 30 yards up the sideline sure. untouched. Uh, Gary, this actually isn't too big of a surprise that Gary Anderson, you know, hasn't really messed with this. Um, at Utah State, the Aggies were routinely in the top 25 in the country. Yeah. Um, they had uh, Robert Turbin, currently Marshawn Lynch, his backup for the Seahawks. Um, he was he was a bruiser. He finished uh, 10th in the country in 2011 in rushing yards. So he knows what he's doing with yeah. it. It's not like he just came in and tried to adapt to what he had there. I mean, he did do that to an extent, I'm sure, but. Um, it was kind of his own style there as well, so it's not completely yeah. new to him. No, this, I mean he he knows what he's doing, and he doesn't he doesn't screw things up. Basically, you know what works there, you know, keep it going. How does Ohio State try to stop this? I mean, we talked about that a little bit. Obviously, they're not going to be in the penny that they ran against mm-hmm. Cal, and a lot less dime that they you know they've run primarily dime and nickel all season. We're going to see probably a lot less of that, a lot more uh, three linebackers. Yeah, but I wouldn't be surprised if there is some. More nickel, not more than maybe the base, but there'll right. still be some nickel just because of the way Wisconsin can attack the edge with the running game. Sure, but I mean it's tough, James. If you can contain James White and sort of make him less of a, you know, who, who do you focus on more? You know, I mean, what's your plan of attack? To who would you rather have beat you? I guess I mean, maybe bigger poison. Yeah, I mean Gordon is faster, White is shiftier, so maybe you'd be able to track him down after a forty-yard gain, but. Obviously, you don't want those types of gains at all. So it's it's tough. Arizona State did a good job stopping White, um, but you know they gave up an 80-yard run in the first play of the second half to Gordon. They gave up another 35-yard run to Gordon. You know, they did as good a job as they could, and, and 
they still gave up over 200 yards rushing. Meyer was asked yesterday whether you know they would kind of put the dime packages on the shelf <laughs> for this week, and he wasn't really an- willing to answer that question. He said that he hadn't talked to Fickle yet, but yeah. you know I'm sure if Meyer wanted to answer that question, he could have. Yeah. So um, we'll see how that how that ends up how that works out. Um, one thing that will be in the Buckeyes' failure is M- Michael Bennett. Um, Meyer said will be back this week. Mm-hmm. He's 100%, and he called Adolphus Washington probable to return. He had that groin injury that he suffered in the San Diego State game. He's been out ever since. So that'd be a, maybe a little bit of a boost if they could get them back, and then you you shuffle in Joey Bosa, and you got a pretty yeah. decent uh, front four right there. Yeah, it's amazing the job that Bosa and Steve Miller have done. You know, while Washington has been out, because we expected. You know, big things from Washington, and everybody else was a question mark. And now you're getting production out of everybody else. And now Washington is seemingly the question mark until he's healthy, and then you just assume he'll be right back to what he was before. Yeah. Before the Cal game, all the defensive backs were saying, you know, this is the game that they were getting amped up where they love playing in that type of game where they get the chance to make plays. Um, now it's, you know, Curtis Grant saying yeah. yesterday that he wants to hit people. So this is the game that he looks yeah. forward to. This really will give the, you know, we haven't been able to really judge the linebackers too much because we haven't seen so much out of them. So this will be the chance, uh, you know, this game will be a measuring stick for them maybe. Yeah, this will be the week we finally find out about Curtis Grant specifically. Yeah. You know, we've, the staff has talked about him glowingly all the way since, you know, March, April on through, but we don't really know. Right. You know, what we've seen is okay, but. We just haven't seen enough. No. And then this, we'll see more than enough to make a determination. And, you know, same with Josh Perry. I mean, he's only, as a strong side linebacker, you're only going to play so much in this defense, but he'll probably play more in this game than he has all season long. Probably, yeah. You think that depth will be tested a little bit in this game? Um, At linebacker? I, I don't know if it'll be tested because as long as you stay healthy, yeah. you know, there's, you only need three. You don't see much of a rotation. No, I, I don't know that they would trust anybody else right now other That's than the three they've thought. got. Yeah. And I don't know how much they trust all three, you know. Right. We'll see. Um, we were talking before the show. I mean, this is really, this could be the leaders division championship game, yeah. right? Yeah. And is there any, is there any doubt that really that's what this is? I have no doubt. Um, unless Wisconsin wins and, you know, Ohio State would still have some type of chance with Wisconsin losing two more games. But, right. I mean, Wisconsin's schedule is really easy. If Ohio State wins, then they would have to lose two more games somewhere along the line, and you know I don't, I don't know. think anybody sees that happen. Right. So I mean, it's yeah. The coaches, you know, Gary Anderson said this wasn't the leaders' division championship game, but you know that's what a coach is supposed to say. He, right. How is this anything but the leaders' division championship game? I think it definitely is. I mean, Wisconsin's got Ohio State this week, and they got Northwestern, and that'll be tough. Mm-hmm. But after that, it's Illinois, Iowa. Indiana, Minnesota, and Penn State in the Big Ten. Right. They should be favored to win all those games, at least after Northwestern. Um, I don't think anyone's picking Penn State. No. Um, so, I mean. Or well, who else is there? I mean, yeah, exactly. Indiana's nice, Indiana but, I mean, they just got destroyed by Missouri. Right. No, I, I think this is unequivocally the, the Big Ten mm-hmm. Leaders Division Championship. Right? Whoever this wins this game is maybe 99% sure going to rep- represent. Yeah. I mean, the there's it. a reason this is the the big recruiting weekend, you know, sure. for Urban Meyer. You know, he wants everybody to see this, and uh, you know, it's it's a big game not just because it's a night game and it's Wisconsin, but it also means the division. Yeah, with Big Ten plays coming up, let's talk about the uh, rest of the Big Ten a little bit. Legends division is a little more convoluted, I'd mm-hmm. say, than than what what is in the leaders' division. Um, Northwestern and Michigan both have four and zero, though Michigan hasn't looked too great doing it. <laughs> um, is Northwestern the favorite in that division right now with the way uh, Michigan has played the last two weeks? I think so, because if you, if you think about what um, Nebraska's defense is, you know, do you see them stopping Northwestern? Do you see Michigan being able to keep up with Northwestern? Uh, so, I mean, it, it's, yeah. I think, maybe a slight favor right now just because you don't know what you're going to get out of Michigan and you don't trust what you're going to get out of Nebraska. Sure. It'll be interesting to see because uh, Northwestern... Michigan State's the offense, I mean... You know what is that? Yeah, exactly. Um, it'll be fun to watch that play out in the Legends Division for sure. I mean, Northwestern has Ohio State um, coming up on the fifth. Then they got Wisconsin, and then they got uh, they got to go, they're at Wisconsin. They're at Nebraska. Um, they get Michigan at home and Michigan State at home. So that'll be. I mean, that'll be fun to watch if they can 
maybe run the table through mm-hmm. that. I don't know. Uh, I think, don't you think the Legends champ would have maybe two losses? And then it would all come down to tiebreakers yeah. and how that stuff shakes yeah, out. Yeah, honestly, I do see the Legends champion having at least a loss. You think two losses? Well, you know, if we're talking about Northwestern being a favorite and if... You know they're going to Wisconsin and to Nebraska yeah, I don't see them and playing out of that clean. Ohio State at home. Yeah, I mean, I think they beat North. At, they won at Nebraska two years ago, so it's not a big deal to them. Right. Yeah, but I, I think it's asking a lot just to come out of there with one loss. I think I think you might be right, but we'll see. Um, I don't know who's your pick if you had to make a pick to come out of that division. I'm probably still going to go with Michigan. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I you know I know them the best. Um, and I can see the potential that they have, but Michigan State, their offense is terrible. But I, you know, their defense is probably good enough to contain Michigan. And but I don't know that they can outscore Northwestern or Nebraska. Yeah, I can't pick Nebraska just because of their defense. You just never know when they're going to have to score forty-five points to win a game. Right. Um, so yeah, maybe Minnesota. How about that? <laughs> the Gophers are undefeated. They're undefeated. It's the Gophers. Um, I picked Michigan at the beginning of the season. I'm going to stick with it for now, although I'm not too confident in that. So next week, it's um, Minnesota at Michigan. Legends Division Championship game, yeah, you think? Yeah, the Legends Division Championship game. A battle of two undefeated teams. What is that? That's the uh, battle for the jug or something, yeah, right? Yep. That's a jug? Yes. Or is that the um, little brown jug? Exactly. Is that that game? Yeah, that's the game. All right. Well, that's, uh, Glenn Mason won it once and ended up taking it out to a bar with them and, you know, had, the, had everybody taking pictures with it and had dinner with it. And do what you got to do. Exactly. Yeah, so Michigan gets Minnesota next week at Penn State. Maybe the, I mean, that's a game that it can mm-hmm. get tripped up on the way they're playing right now. I don't mm-hmm. know. Um, they're at I, Michigan. I think uh, what I like about that game is Penn State has good tight ends that it can attack a defense, and that's where you know Michigan's defense can be vulnerable. Yeah, that's true. They go at Michigan State. They got Nebraska at home, and they're at Northwestern. I don't see them coming out of that no. clean either. Um, maybe three and two, maybe three and two. Yeah, I don't see them losing more than two games. I mean, it's, they lost to uh, UCF. Wait, who are we talking about? Right, I'm talking about Penn State. Who are you oh, talking about? I'm talking about Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Penn State. They could be three and two. Yeah, I could see that. They'll probably. Yeah. Michigan, on the other hand, I don't know. What do you see them coming out of the Big Ten at? One loss, two losses. You picked them to win. Yeah, well, that's why I'm saying you know two win, two losses could get it done, and then you just leave it up to the tiebreakers. If you have yeah. two losses, though, the first tiebreakers head to head, so you would have to have beaten probably both Nebraska and Northwestern, or at least one of them. Oh yeah, definitely. You have to win one of those. So the other losses would have had to come to Penn State, Indiana, Michigan State, or okay. Iowa, or Ohio, and Ohio yeah. State, obviously. So I, I could see that actually. If you want to chalk up a loss, you'll say that, or at least we'll say they won't be favored when they play Ohio State. Right. So if they were to lose one of those games, Northwestern, Nebraska, Michigan State, that puts them at two losses, and potentially they could still be. Yeah, if they have the tiebreaker over everybody else except for like Northwestern, you know, maybe Northwestern loses a third game somewhere, and I don't know. It's that that division is just completely up for grabs. Yeah, I think unless so you're too. Iowa. Yeah, I think so too. Um, it'll be interesting to play out for sure, to watch play out. Anything else we want to talk about as far as the Big Ten, with Big Ten play getting started? No, I'm good. All right. Um, I think that's all for today then. We'll be back next week following another thrilling game. Um, first week of Big Ten play should be a little more exciting then. Do you think uh, there will be more points scored in last week's game or this week's game total? Total? 76. I'm going up. Under. Wisconsin, Ohio State n- normally play a pretty low scoring mm-hmm. affair. I'm going under. Yeah, I think that's the the, the safe bet. I'm going to say, I'm not going to tell my score, but I'm going to say 56 points scored. So you can take that as you how you want it. That's what you think my final score will so be. So you're thinking like, uh, like 45 to 11, something like that. Maybe. You'll have to wait. You'll have to wait till Friday to find out. Stay tuned. I'll stay tuned. Stay tuned. Staff picks on Friday. Check it out. You can you can see my final score. So all right. Anything else? 
Uh, no, that's it. I'm good. All right, let's wrap this up. We'll be back next week, everybody. Until then, peace out. See ya. 56 nothing. <laughs>